so hello everyone this is satvik and in this video i'll be showing you how you can implement a subdomain finder using python so without getting any delay let's start so guys you guys are really loving my python for ethical hacking series and i'm gonna continue it so if you haven't watched any of my previous videos you can find my, uh, a playlist for python for ethical hacking in my channel itself okay or i will link it at the end of this video in cards or at the end screen so without getting any delay uh, let's dive into this video so so if you let me give you a brief idea of what subdomains mean so if you take a google.com so if you take google.com as a domain uh, this is the domain guys and uh, things like drive.google.com and uh, mail.google.com and all these things are subdomains okay so we can get a domain okay, like google.com or tesla.com or anything else but drive.google.com mail.google.com are a little bit different okay like uh, they serve a specific purpose and in the field of buck bounty hunting uh, finding out many as many as subdomains uh, really help you uh, which like it increases the scope right so in this video i'll be showing you how you can uh, get all like some possible subdomains uh, where we'll provide our domain name and uh, we'll try to get out some domains uh, subdomains okay so let me close this thing and let me create a simple file close this thing so first first of all let me save this to my desktop uh, so let me name it like subdomain finder.py so this is a python file okay so let's start so first of all what you need to do is you need to import requests so if you have if you don't have requests you can open your terminal or uh, so just a minute guys let me open my powershell here in powershell or in command prompt simply type pip install requests so if it's already installed uh, you can find like this but or else uh, it will download it so i already have requests in my machine so i'm gonna close this thing right now so i imported requests over here and let's take domain uh, like this is the input so input uh, and let's prompt something like enter domain so let me enlarge this a little bit so that you guys can look at uh, it perfectly okay so what our program is doing is we are importing request so request is a module uh, which helps you in communicating to a web server so it could be on any port whether it can be https or http anything uh, with the help of this request module you can try to communicate with that okay like you can send some requests okay so that's what uh, uh, that's what it does let me correct my uh, spelling mistakes here so so now one more thing we require is and one more thing we require is we need to have a word list guys so there are many word lists out there uh, word list for subdomains yeah you can find some ton of them guys like uh, if you go to github or dns can anything else you'll find some ton of them subdomains 100.txt you'll find some some of them let's try to use this guys or you can uh, create your own that's not at all a problem so i'll go to raw i'll copy all the stuff so what i'll be doing is i'll be taking the domain and i'll be adding these terms to uh, in front of my domain and i'll be checking whether it's live or not uh, by making use of some inbuilt requests uh, methods okay or functions you can call anything else so let me copy this thing let me open a new thing and i'm gonna save this guys again uh, let this be word list dot txt okay so i created a word list uh, which is uh, uh, containing some words okay uh, which we can use for our uh, script so what i'll be doing is uh, we'll be uh, working with files so let me create a variable file and let me open the word list let me open that the file where we word list dot txt just let me confirm it once again uh, whether it's fine or not 
if it's go if it if it goes wrong then uh, wordlist.txt yes that's absolutely fine guys and we need to give uh, a permissions to read okay so r specifies a reading permission so what we are doing is uh, we are telling we are creating a variable uh, which contains all the data of word dot uh, wordlist.txt and that too in readable format okay and uh, we'll create another so this is nothing file variable nothing but consists of this file okay so let's create another variable let that be content uh, like let's keep the names that are really relevant and read so what this have what this does is so content is a variable which consists of all the data that the file has and file is nothing but our wordlist.txt okay so and one more thing we need to do is uh, let me create one one more uh, variable so i'll tell you what this does content dots so guys uh, there is a method like split line so what it does is so if you take over this i think it is showing you something uh, okay so split lines uh, what it does is it converts any data type like uh, a string or anything else into a list format so while working with this large data uh, it will it will be really helpful if you are having that in the format of list so list is like nothing but like an array okay which you can call it via uh, indexes and stuff so that's what i had done here so subdomain is a variable uh, is a list which consists of all this stuff uh, which is our word lists okay uh, which is available in our word lists.txt file and so let's start uh, diving into it so for for subdomain in subdomains so what this does i have i had already shown you what uh, this thing does so what it does is it takes uh, one value okay uh, from one particular location from subdomains uh, this is a list and it is termed suppose let's think like subdomains of zero okay is like subdomain and this keeps on iterating till it till all the data in the subdomains are completed so let me create one more variable url1 and i'm gonna do formatting i had already shown you what formatting is so it it makes our life much more easier so let me show you http colon slash slash subdomain dot domain so what i'm doing is formatting is really simple guys okay so whenever you want to place a variable uh, within a string okay like if you want to do it in string formatting or string concatenation uh, the data which you are concatenating should also be in string so that could be a little bit messy uh, but if you use formatting strings this is nothing but a string guys uh, what it does is it places the data here that's all that's all that's what we're doing and the first url is for http okay like if you take www.google.com we'll see for whether the http is available or not okay and if it's not then we'll go to one one more thing which is url2 okay so url2 is nothing but our https uh, version uh, tps subdomain dot so if you if you uh, observe carefully i'm um, suppose if you take www dot www is our subdomain and our domain is google.com so it's what it's doing is www dot which is available here and then our domain okay so this is what it's doing here so we created two variables which is url1 and url2 so this is for uh, uh, http one for https so now let's go a little bit deeper so there is something like exceptions guys not only in python but even in java or anything else so exceptions are like uh, suppose if you try to uh, execute one by zero uh, which is uh, not defined right so if you try to execute that then it's gonna throw some errors but what we'll be doing is we'll be making use of try and accept like, like exceptions and we'll make the uh, result look beautiful so i'll show you what it does so uh, make a try block guys so in try block we'll be looking into some experimental stuff like one by zero or stuff like that uh, if the term comes it will uh, there will be another block named as accept so it is gonna catch it and it is gonna show what's available there so you can do a little bit of research guys so there are many more good resources 
try accept python uh, you can find uh, many uh, resources for this uh, try to learn it if you are not uh, like not too good into programming okay so let's dive so what i am doing is i think my caps lock is on so previously we imported a module called request right so in request there are some uh, there are some requests like get put and stuff like that so what i'll be doing is i'll be requesting a get method on url1 okay so what i'm doing is i'm trying to get a url1 request uh, like for the http version and if it's and i'll also show you the accept block so what our accept is gonna do is whenever we got a connection error, like if you don't have this particular url this is gonna catch it and this is gonna print what's uh what's the error or stuff like that you can do any manual stuff so you'll be getting a connection error you'll be getting something like connection er error if the url is not available like if you can't connect to this if you can't send a, any type of request to the particular uh url then you will be definitely getting something like connection error so what i'll be doing is i'll be simply doing pass or you can simply pretend as this subdomain is not available okay but that's uh, that makes our uh, output looks like uh, uh, what you call little bit messier so i'll be going like this so i'm looking for the url one if i couldn't connect to this then it is gonna uh, our ex accept block is gonna catch it and pass is like it leaves and uh, it goes to the next thing okay it goes to the next subdomain and then it keeps on running so if uh, let's think if the uh, url is available url1 is available which is http version so what we'll be printing is so something like discovered url so which is our url1 okay so what i'm showing is uh, we got this url one like we found this url and we'll also request for uh, we'll also send a git get request for url2 as well the reason why i place http at top is uh, most of the times you get http if it's not available then uh, there would be some problem like for https as well or you can modify the logic guys this is what i'm gonna this is what a basic program is and you can implement something like threads and stuff like that so that you can make this look much, much more better so we'll also print let me copy this thing let me don't uh, let me don't waste your time and okay i'm gonna save it so if you can see it uh, this is what we implemented so we uh, input we took uh, domain and uh, sorry and then here uh, we open the file we read the file uh, which is uh, okay and then we uh, converted the data into the list format and then we are looping over that list okay for http and https versions and then in the we are trying to connect to it and if it's not going to connect to it then uh, it is going to throw some error right and we are going to catch it with the help of accept and uh, we are simply passing that thing that's all guys we can improve this as well okay like first of all you can look for all the http stuff and next you can look for all the http stuff you can improve yourself okay this is just a raw program guys okay so and this code will be also available on uh, github as well i'll provide you the link in the description below so i saved it guys uh, let me open this location okay so let me open this with an ide so that uh, running this uh, makes much more better let me run this thing so it is asking me for the domain let that be google.com so you can see it is running guys you can see we we discovered something like google.com uh, https google.com mail.google.com and yes this is gonna run and this would be and to be uh, fair this is not gonna be faster okay so you need to implement something like threats so that's gonna be a little bit advanced and uh, i'm i don't want to confuse you guys okay so multi-threading is like uh, thread is nothing but a part of process okay you can read some resources you can see how you can implement them and that's gonna be a little bit difficult if you are a beginner but if you know uh, if you have a good amount of knowledge on python then you can implement that as well and uh, 
make sure this is a raw code guys make sure you work on this and uh, uh, make it look better okay and uh, since i'm posting that on my github you can try to modify that your modification will be really helpful to some of the uh, some other guys who are gonna uh, look into this so guys this is everything regarding how you can implement a simple subdomain finder using python so this is running i think there are no subdomains like let me hit control c and that's gonna stop for a while as i told you this is uh, gonna take some time okay so so that's everything regarding how you can implement the subdomain finder guys and uh, uh, really thank you for all your support guys you guys are loving my videos and there will be one more video on how to become good into or how to get started with cyber security or ethical hacking or penetration testing so there will be a video on that tomorrow as well so make sure you subscribe to, to this channel and do share this video to any of your friends who are really interested in learning hacking and uh, you can find some of my links like for uh, twitter instagram and my course everything you find the links for everything of them in the description below check them out and uh, you can also join my discord server for more support so that's it for today guys i'll be back tomorrow i'll be uh, back with new content tomorrow so this is satvik signing off